All right, welcome to the Biological and Biochemical Foundations of Living Systems introduction video. I'm very excited to talk to you about this section. Before we um, get started, let me just say this. There are many students who have majored in biology who are going to apply to take MCAT, of course, apply to medical school. And most pre-med majors will be bio on average. So what, I'm want, what I want to say is when you approach this section, approach it with the same level of commitment and intimidation as you would any of the other sections. Don't take it for granted that because you have a background in biology, you don't need to study as hard for this section. Notice that this section is called the Biological and Biochemical Foundations of Living Systems. And so like the other um, sections of the MCAT, it's using an integrative approach. And what this means is you can't just study your bio um, textbooks to do well here. You're going to have to study other things as well. This section of the exam will last approximately, I'm sorry, exactly 95 minutes. We'll have approximately 67 questions. Now, the way the questions are set up, some questions, most of them, will be um, passage related. Passage related does not mean that they, they have to do directly with the passage. They could be about the same subject. Okay, so for instance, you might have a passage that has to do with dyslipidemia, you know, cholesteremia, things like that. And then you get a question um, in the five to six that are supposed to be correlated with the passage about the structure of the cholesterol molecule or how it enters the cell membrane or something of the sort. So it doesn't, even though that would be the same topic area, um, the structure of cholesterol isn't really based on the passage. That's something that you'd have to know. So the second type of question on this section would be the freestanding question. So you're responsible for passage-based questions where you're going to be asked to think critically, as well as questions for which you, you're expected to already know the answer. So you have to study and make sure you have those foundational concepts. It's not just biology, okay? So you can't just say, hey, this is the biology section. It's not. And here's why. This section has absolutely introductory level biology, but you can't cover the biological systems of the body without thinking about the chemistry, how stuff works. And so you cannot study biochemistry without first doing regular chemistry. Think about your plan of study as a student. You had to take biology as a prerequisite before you could take other things, right? You didn't get into biochemistry unless you had some organic chemistry. And you didn't get to organic chemistry in most cases unless you already took general or inorganic chemistry. So absolutely on this section of the exam, you must be prepared to answer questions from these disciplines. Not only biology, but general chem, and OCHEM, organic chemistry as well. You'll also be responsible for physics concepts. Physics, it's very important. So think about biophysics um, and biochemistry, absolutely. And this section of the MCAT, even though this is where the bulk of the biology is, it will focus on the molecular biology and the cellular biology, not the macroscopic stuff. So even though you might have a few questions about evolution, um, it won't stress ecology or animal um, behavior and things like that. There's a social and psychological section of the exam that deals with behavior. And that's why this portion of the test doesn't deal so heavily with ecology in those branches or sub-disciplines of biology. On this exam, you'll be assessed for four basic skills. One will be recall of prior knowledge obtained. The second will be the ability to read the passages and answer questions using scientific reasoning and inquiry. Third, you'll be asked about the actual research methods that were used, you know. How else could the um, scientists have performed this experiment? Why did the scientists choose this protein or this technique? You'll be expected to have a very thorough understanding of research practices in the bio biological laboratory. And last but not least, data analysis. You'll be presented with graphs and charts and figures and asked to interpret them in terms of their results or just their content. So again, these are the four basic skills that you'll be um, tested on. So in a nutshell, what's really happening here? If you look at this, you see one, two, three, four, five, where's my little pointer? Six, seven. You see an atom. Atoms form, molecule, molecules form cell, cells form tissue. Tissues will, different types of tissues together will form an organ. Organs integrate themselves to form, uh, to form organ systems and organ systems from you and I. And so what you're seeing here are the different levels or the anatomical levels of life. 
right? And you would have seen this in an anatomy course or general biology in chapter one, when they teach you what is a cell, um, you know, before or what is life and all of these things. So as we look at this, be prepared, okay, to answer questions that are very broad or questions that are also very, very, very specific. But the ultimate goal is for you to be able to demonstrate that you understand that each of these components play, um, plays a specific and important role in maintaining homeostasis at the level of the organism. You know, yes, you can study, um, for instance, diabetes. Diabetes, we know it's a disease. Um, it's going to have to do with insulin in production, um, for instance, in one case. Now, if you're looking at insulin production, there's an organ that's involved in that process. Insulin is a protein, so you could have a question about the molecular structure of insulin, um, post-translational modification of insulin. You could have an experiment with um, mice who don't produce insulin versus mice who produce insulin. So you see it's very, very wide. But ultimately, if we're dealing with homeostasis and you're presented with diabetes, you understand that each of these components plays a role. And that's what the MCAT is trying to assess. Can you recognize the different levels okay, of organization? for life and how each plays a role in health. That's it. All right, so specifically, these questions will be arranged based on the foundational concepts. First is foundational concept number one. It deals with the unique properties of biomolecules and the way in which they influence cell structure and function. Function. So here we're looking at cell biology and molecular biology. 1A will be protein structure and function. Three-dimensional structures of proteins, which are based on their primary structure. How different proteins in the living system interact. Enzymes, as well as non-enzymes, receptors. How do they interact with each other to maintain form and function? Um, gene expression. You're not going to take an MCAT in this century without being tested on genetics. You'll be responsible not just for knowing the structure of the molecules involved in gene expression, but also the process by which information is passed through the cell, DNA to RNA to protein, the traditional model, as well as any uh, alternative models. You know, we have the reverse because of viruses, et cetera. Heredity and genetic diversity, population genetics, all these concepts will be present. Bioenergetics, so think about glycolysis, those kind of metabolic pathways will be present on the exam as well. Now, foundational concept number two deals with the levels of organization and their interactions to sustain health and living systems, the levels that I just showed you. So we start off at the bottom with the biomolecules, those proteins, DNA molecules, lipids and carbohydrates, especially proteins. And then we move up to the levels of organizations. So you'll be responsible for um, being able to recognize concepts related to the anatomical levels of both unicellular and multicellular systems. As we begin to think about unicellular, this is where your microbiology course pays off. You'll have to answer questions about viral dynamics, um, how viruses grow, why they're uh, not considered living, etc. The same for prokaryotic or anuclear organisms, which would be bacteria and members of domain archae. So you're responsible for those things as well. Cell biology will be present on this section, and that's very important. If you think about things like cancer, um, mitosis, meiosis, all of these things, all these very, very uh, important concepts and foundational principles that were covered in your biology courses will be present as well. But remember that it's not just to ask you a question about something you've learned kind of exam. You'll have passages. So you might have a cancer um, passage, and you'll have to answer questions about cell biology as well as genetics, as well as um, viruses all in one. So you have to keep in mind this is an integrative exam, so you're going to have to put all the components together. Finally, you have foundational concept number three. It looks at how complex systems of tissues and organs sense the internal and external environment from multicellular organs. Organisms, not organs, multicellular organs. Hmm. Multicellular organisms. And how integrated function is responsible for maintaining homeostasis. So these questions will deal with the systems of the body. Um, concept 3A deals with the control system. So you'll be asked questions about the nervous system as well as the endocrine system. And then the remaining systems will be evaluated or assessed through questions in content category 3B. And one thing you must realize, even though when you took, if you took anatomy, if you didn't, that's okay. Uh, you can study. You don't have to worry about it. You were um, introduced to each system of the body one at a time. That's the very classic traditional way of teaching um, human anatomy and physiology. But the truth is that 
all of them are interconnected, right? Muscles don't contract without influence from the nervous system, all right? We don't speak without influence from the nervous system. Our digestion, think about autonomic nervous system. So there's this integration of sorts between the different systems of the body. And foundational concept number three, it might ask you some freestanding questions, but also be prepared to answer questions that are embedded um, in passages as well. Okay, so those are the three foundational concepts, complex, complex systems and their organs, um, levels of organization, and of course, the unique properties of biomolecules and their impact on cell structure and function. So it's not just biology, it is the biological and biochemical foundations of living systems. As you study for this, you must review biology. You must review general chemistry, you must review your organic chemistry, and you must review your biochemistry if you're going to do well on this section. Well, I wish you all the best and best of, best of luck as you tackle the biological and biochemical foundations of living systems.